Alright guys, I'm back to bring another tutorial for R2 Mod Man and using mods in Risk of Rain 2. Updated for the anniversary update. I'm going to take you through it start to finish as fast as I can. So first thing you want to do is go to thunderstore.io, which is the website for mods for Risk of Rain 2. I've gone here and the thing you're going to want to download is R2 Mod Man. That is an application that will manage the mods for you. So let's click that. If it's not pinned, just search for it. R2 Mod Man. And right now we're going to click manual download and we're going to download the file. Once you've got that downloaded, you want to open it and it's going to be a zip file. And in there, the only thing you want is the setup. Go ahead and run this program. Windows might tell you that it is not allowed, but just hit more information and install anyway because it modifies system files. So now that we've got that installed, you're going to want to press the Windows key or hit start and search for R2 Mod Man and open up the application. And when you start, R2 Mod Man is going to look like this. You want to select Risk of Rain 2 because that is the game we are playing and you can choose to set it as your default. And then at this point, you're going to see this screen and you might not have any profile or default. What you want to do is you want to import and you want to import from file. Now you want to find the file that I provided in the first link in the description. It's the essentialmodpack.r2z. I'm going to import that and create. It's going to take a second. I'm going to take you through all of these mods individually, and then we're going to launch the game and see what they do. So first we have three require three or four required mods for all of these. These are called dependencies. You always want to download mods with dependencies. So Beb and Xbox, R2 API, Hook Gen Patcher, M Hook Standalone. We don't need to worry about these. These effectively do nothing for us. Starting with the first mod that actually does something is called Better UI. And it is just a bunch of changes to the game that I think are really good and they don't affect gameplay in any way. And Item Stats mod is basically a dependency for Better UI. You get a richer experience if you have this one also installed. This is the first mod that you will actively use. It's called Debug Toolkit. It basically allows console commands for debugging mods and altering the games in various ways. And then the next one is called Unmodded Version. It basically spoofs your version number of the game to be the official one so you can connect to anybody for better or for worse. Sometimes mods aren't compatible with each other, but this at least puts you on a level field to see what works and what doesn't. But this will allow you to connect to unmodded players easily. Drop in multiplayer. You can disable this or uninstall it if you don't think you're going to use it. But uh, drop in multiplayer is very uh, helpful for people who join late game. And I also use mid run artifacts. This allows you to enable or disable artifacts during a run. So if you want to go on a long run and you want to mess around, again, another one. I, if you don't think you're going to use it, don't bother. So when we're all when this looks good to go, you can go ahead and uh, install any other mods at this point that you feel like you want. You want to hit start modded. I've got music in the background. All right, now that we're in game, I'm gonna run you through a couple of the mods and show you what everything does. At this point, feel free to experiment on your own or stop watching the video. But if you wanna understand more, better what each mod does, I'm gonna take you into a run and we're gonna see. So the first thing you'll notice is the better UI mod there on the right. Yours might look slightly different than mine because I've got mine configured in certain ways, but there's a bunch of changes that come along with that. But the first thing I'm going to show you is the console. The console is always there. It's accessed by pressing control alt tilde. That key command is once again going to be in the description. And you've got a couple commands that I'll take you through soon. But right now I'm going to turn God and no enemies. And then kill all two. That was just a few of the commands. What I've done is I've disabled enemies and I've killed them all and I've given myself God mode so I can run around and test a few mods. 
So first things first, if you hold tab, you can see there's a couple different things. Uh, money, individual item count, item count, and item score. Determines how well you're doing in a run. Useful for playing multiplayer. So let's go ahead and give ourselves some items so we can see more what the better UI does. Giving myself 20 random items. And you can see up in the top already, items are ordered in a certain way defined by a config file and by, def by default like this. Reds, greens, whites, and then scrap at the end. So your most numerous item is always gonna be on the left. I have two leaching seeds, so it's over there. If I got two, if I got two more ukuleles and became three, it would be over there and vice and etc. And you can see um, if I hover over it, the better stats mod will uh, determine the proc chance for the ukulele and the thing with the clover. You can see all of that and uh, holding tab mouse over. You can see your proc coefficient, how much uh, tri tips you got to cast and a bunch of other really like useful things to know. And then uh, you'll also get expanded uh, information about your stats. Uh, when you hold tab all right and now let's look at some of the debug toolkit commands and to find the debug toolkit commands you want to uh, go into uh, your mod manager and click debug toolkit and then you can always click the version number and that will take you to the website and you can see all of the commands so uh, there's a bunch of different ones you know like kill all true kill respawn a lot of basic stuff, but there's some stuff like give items, give equip, spawn interactables. Just play around with these and see what they do. Uh, I've had, I was able to do a lot of cool things with them, like F1, 2, and 3 uh, toggles uh, portals on my other profile. This is a blank profile. You have to configure your own commands. All right, and then now we're going to look at the mid run artifact, which is another console command. Once again, it is enabled by pressing Control, Alt, and the tilde key. The first time you press Control, Alt, tilde will be the unlocking it. From then on, you only have to press tilde to open it. So mid run artifacts is abbreviated as MRA underscore enable or disable. And then if you press the down arrow key, you can see all of the uh, artifacts you can enable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and enable art. And that's how that one works, enable, disable. And then um, drop in multiplayer. If you've kept that installed, uh, we'll uh, present a, um, a welcome a welcome text in a, the game chat. But in order to use drop-in multiplayer, you, a player simply has to type join, space, and then the character they'd like to play as. So if they want to be captain, they could do it. I have it set up so that you can't uh, change your character while you're playing to keep it more vanilla experience and to prevent abuse. But that's all they have to do if there's free slots. And then that is effectively all the mods that you have to worry about. But we can run through some commands with the debug toolkit that are fun. You can do spawn underscore interactable. And if you ever played Minecraft with commands, it's kind of similar. You type out the command and then you just press the down arrow key to get a selection of uh, all these different things you can do. You can spawn a bunch of cra crazy stuff. You can also do spawn AI and then all kinds of cool things in the game. And then the number after it determines how many, and then there's elite indexes and so on and so forth. So you kill all two. Two is the enemy uh, enemy team. So if I were to do kill all one, that would kill all the players on the player team. So let's go into a new run. There's fun ones like next stage. You can do uh, moon. And this is a fun treat for after the anniversary update if you go to next stage moon. It's always fun to see people's reactions when you take them in here in multiplayer. And you're like, wait, what is this? Expecting to go to the new uh, moon, but it's still in the game and it still functions pretty well. So it's a fun thing to do. You can do spawn as, you can do acrid because it's always the first that pops up. And you can change players. Oh God mode so I don't die. And this works for other players too. Every player will have a number associated with them. So you can hit list player and you can see number uh, space zero is Dalton. And so any subsequent multiplayer players will be one, two, three, etc. So you can do spawn as say you wanted your friend in the game, spawn as acrid one, 
and see it says specified player does not exist because I'm not playing multiplayer, but you get the idea, you can spawn them as Acrid. And there's all kinds of fun things you can do. You can, whoops, that's, that's just Artificer. I was trying to find an enemy to turn into, it's just Artificer. Aurelionite, you can play as Aurelionite and understand like more better how their skills work. You ever wanted to see Aurelionite with 30 red whips? There it is. All right. I hope that gives you a basic idea of what you can do with just general basic mods that don't really affect gameplay. Unless you want them to, of course. Uh, in Risk of Rain 2, opens a lot of useful features. And why you would want this in a run is because sometimes you get stuck in an area like up there is Acrid, or if you miss a red item due to a uh, mistimed teleporter hint or something like that, you can just give the red item if you want, or you can respawn your friends in. All kinds of things to make your gameplay experience smoother and more tailored to you. But I hope this was helpful and I hope in that I didn't ramble too much. If you have any questions, feel free to post it in the comments and look forward to hopefully more tutorials coming. And thank you for watching.